Hey everybody, it's Stuart once again, and today I want to talk about something called attachment styles. Now, if you have not heard about attachment styles, you'll be interested to know how the impact of parenting actually plays a role in your upbringing, the way you handle relationships, the way you handle communication, and most importantly, how your own intimate relationships get formed up. But beyond that, there are so many other implications in terms of your socialization and also the way you think about other people. Let's define what attachment styles actually are. Attachment styles refer to the way by which we establish emotional bonds with other people. These styles are established in childhood and tend to have a significant impact as we establish other relationships beyond childhood. There are four main styles of attachment, secure, avoidant, anxious, and disorganized. I'll go through each of them to describe the patterns and also give you some idea in terms of their impact in later life. Number one, secure attachment style. Individuals with a secure attachment style tend to have positive self-esteem and tend to trust more in others. They are comfortable with intimacy and are able to rely on other people for support. This attachment style is formed through responsive and consistent caregiving during childhood. The advantage of having a secure attachment style is the ability to form healthy and fulfilling relationships. Also, they can trust other people better and rely on others for support. They are more comfortable with intimacy and express their emotions more effectively. And most important, they can set boundaries yet maintain independence while still being connected with their partner. Conversely, those with an avoidant attachment style tend to avoid intimacy and have difficulty connecting with others. There's a tendency to fear rejection and abandonment. As a result of inconsistent caregiving or a lack of responsiveness during the caregiving process, this creates an individual's difficulty in attempting to seek help when they do need it. So, when struggling with intimacy and also struggling to share emotions, it becomes easier to have a problem with committed relationships. There's also a tendency to push people away and also have trouble maintaining the balance between independence and intimacy. Third, let's talk about the anxious attachment style. Individuals with an anxious attachment style tend to require a lot more reassurance. There is this fear of abandonment underlying this fear. This attachment style is formed as a result of unpredictable childhood caregiving. Very frequently, those with an anxious attachment style will end up having codependency issues which can turn a relationship into an unhealthy one. One of the issues regarding constant reassurance is that individuals within an intimate relationship are likely, with an anxious attachment style, to require so much reassurance, have so much jealousy that it creates tension within that relationship. Finally, let's talk about the disorganized attachment style. The disorganized attachment style has a mix of different kinds of behaviors from all of the other three attachment styles. One characteristic is that they struggle to manage their emotions or even regulate them. So if you found that you've experienced trauma, abuse and neglect during childhood, there's a very high chance that you'll develop this style of attachment. Some of the key negative consequences will include difficulty in forming healthy relationships and a tendency towards self-destructive behaviors. Because of this, there's a tendency to have problems with the relationship and even if there is a strong bond, this relationship might end up becoming very toxic. Now, as you're assessing yourself across these attachment styles, you're probably thinking, do I belong to any one of these four? The truth is, across life, you have time to reassess and readjust yourself. Sometimes just learning a skill set of emotional regulation, such as mindfulness and meditation, can already help to reset your mind towards a better and healthier relationship attachment style. Moreover, individuals are quite pliable. You will end up potentially making decisions that help you to move away from less savory attachment styles to something that's a little bit more effective for you. Sometimes it's a journey. For example, there are individuals who have gone through a disorganized attachment style, gone through some aspects of trauma therapy, and learned social skills in order for them to develop the confidence, the boundary setting, and also the ability to communicate effectively so that their relationship can blossom. Overall, there are many strategies that you can take in order to establish better and healthier attachment styles. Number one, learning about emotional regulation. We've heard across all those styles, emotional regulation is key. So if you don't yet know how to manage your own emotions, it might be a good idea to take a look at some of my earlier videos on how to do emotional regulation. Number two, setting boundaries. A lot of people don't understand the process of setting effective boundaries. For instance, if you wanted to, you could tell a person to go away. 
That's one way of forcefully setting a boundary. However, you could do it in a much more savvy fashion. For example, you could say, I need to be with myself at this moment and I'll get back to you once I have sorted myself through. Now, that kind of boundary setting can be prefaced with an explanation of how you feel, why you feel it, and how this relates to the other person or not. Because at the end of the day, couple communication and interpersonal skills come into the picture when you're setting a boundary. You probably don't want people who just ghost you for no particular reason, let alone walk away with no explanation whatsoever. Number three, leaning into highest positive intent. Most of the time, when you're brought up in an environment that might be abusive or might be completely devastating, where you've gone through many, many episodes of trauma, this can cause you to have either an avoidant or a disorganized attachment style. And what this means is that it's necessary for you to learn to believe in something, whatever that thing is. And probably the easiest way to do it is to think about it very logically about another person's positive intention. By holding positive intention as the central assumption across all human beings and their behavior, one can learn to recalibrate and reframe themselves so that they will be able to see a behavior as the thing that needs to be changed rather than a person's attitude, which tends to be a little bit more difficult to change. Number four, developing self-efficacy. Now I've spoken at length about the concept of self-efficacy and it's a very powerful one. If you choose to develop self-efficacy, there are many ways to do it, including establishing mastery over certain things to boost your self-esteem, to go through several rounds of repetition so that you'll be able to get so used to it that you feel like you're a master. Another thing that's central to self-efficacy is what I mentioned earlier, which is emotional regulation. That's also something that's crucial in establishing a solid sense of self-confidence too. Research by Brene Brown has also highlighted that when you build the courage to talk to people in a vulnerable fashion, you're very likely to be able to build a sense of psychological safety, especially when the environment is conducive for you to do that. So there are so many things that can enable you to build self-efficacy and as a result, allow you to overcome old attachment styles that are not very savory. All in all, if you found this was helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel so that we can reach out to even more people on YouTube. This will help people with relationship challenges and communication challenges, and in fact, any kind of interpersonal challenge that might stand in the way of them elevating themselves to a level beyond suffering and to be able to take actions for abundance in their social settings.